Hi, my name is Pamela Fuseli, and I'm the host of Popping the Bubble Wrap. Are you the person in your family who worries about the safety of others, about buying safety products and using them? Are you yelling, yes, that's me? Then this is the podcast for you. Raising a child or children can be a hair-raising undertaking, and keeping them safe is your priority. Parachute's Popping the Bubble Wrap podcast explores what you really need to think about and provides easy tips on prevention strategies. No bubble wrap here, though. Wiping the sweat from your brow, you let out a sigh of relief. Finally, the crib is assembled and ready for baby, due any day now. You've put together the change table. You've got the diapers and the onesies. So close to being prepared for the little one to arrive. Just one last task to take care of. Buying a car seat and getting it installed for the ride home from the hospital. You've been avoiding this because between knowing what type of car seat your infant will need, understanding Canada's car seat laws, and figuring out how to install the darn thing, navigating the world of car seats is no small feat. New and expecting parents rest at ease, today we are going to talk it through. Everything you need to know about selecting and installing a car seat to get your infant safely home from the hospital. And I know we said we would be talking about safe sleep today, but things happen. So we'll be talking about safe sleep in a future episode. Joining me today for the conversation are parents Beth Collada and Shazia Carmali, along with our expert Holly Choi, Vice President of the Child Passenger Safety Association of Canada. Welcome, everyone. Hi, Thank you for Thanks having for having me. us. Thank you. Beth and Shazia, you are both expecting soon. What has been your experience understanding this um, unfortunately confusing world of car seats? Are you deep in the process now? Are you done? What's top of mind for you as you take this on? Shazia, maybe we'll start with you. I know you're due first. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pam. We have selected our car seat, um, but it's a process we started back in December, um, top of mind for us was definitely safety and ease of use. Um, and it was kind of a roller coaster trying to understand what was available and why there were so many options and why some are more expensive than others and what makes one better than another. And, you know, when you walk into the retailer, they're all kind of displayed on the shelf and they all look like they're the same kind of idea. So it was, um, definitely a hard, uh, hard thing to navigate. Um, but we did make our selections. <laughs> it's a bit overwhelming, isn't it? It's definitely overwhelming. <laughs> Beth, did you have this, a similar experience? Yeah, similar to Shazia. I We have purchased our car seat and we ended up going with the Uppa Baby Asa Max and it's still in the box. We haven't taken it out and we haven't read <laughs> any manuals or tried to install. So that'll be the next process, which I think will be probably fairly daunting as well. You almost have to do your own research um, on on the car seats. And as you said, there's an owner's manual. There's so many choices. Holly, maybe you can tell us about some common mistakes when you see when parents are trying to find and install the right car seat for their infant. Absolutely. And you know what? I am an example of what not to do when you're looking for a car seat, because with my first, I made two very crucial mistakes that I wish someone had given me advice ahead of time. So hopefully for those of you that are listening and expecting, this will be helpful. I chose my first baby's car seat based on the color because it was cute and my favorite color. And just like you said, Beth, you walk into a store, they're displayed so nicely and you just you get a little bit overwhelmed at looking at them all. So having the color is a nice to have, but the most important thing and what as certified child passenger safety technicians, we always suggest to parents and caregivers is you are looking really for four things when it comes to selecting a car seat. It has to fit your child. It has to fit your vehicle. It has to fit your budget. And you have to be able to use it correctly every single time. The Canadian Pediatric Society has a statistic that a correctly used car seat can reduce the risk of fatality by up to 71%. 
that's a huge difference that we can make, but using the car seats correctly isn't easy either. So the two mistakes I made, one was making sure that I found one that fit my vehicle and using it correctly, which you think that would be easy, but it's not. Shazia or Beth, do either of you happen to have a compact SUV or a compact vehicle by any chance? Uh, yeah, I've got Hyundai Tucson. Yeah. So something that I found with the compact SUVs is that they're really just a sedan that's higher off the ground with a little <laughs> bit more of a hatch. So my first car seat that I bought based off of the color was actually, it turned out to be the second largest infant car seat on the market in terms of the front to back space that it took up. And I drove a hatchback. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to go out and I'm going to get an SUV. That'll fix my problem. Seems a little bit backwards to do it that way, but that's how my brain worked. I really wanted to sell the idea to my husband that we got an SUV anyway. So at that point, guess what? It didn't fit my SUV either. And that's just a really common flaw is that we don't realize not all car seats fit all vehicles. So you have to go to the store and physically ask to try it in your car first. Wow. Beth, uh, Shazia, did either of you try it in your vehicle? You both, you both said they're both is still in the box, so probably <laughs> no. not. But was that one of your um, considerations that it would fit in your vehicle? To be honest, I didn't really even think about it. But now, now that you said that, Holly, I'm thinking I should probably take it out of the box sooner than later and see that it does fit nicely because I have a few months to return it and buy something different. I had the same thought process as Holly, like, well, I have an SUV, so it should be fine. But I didn't try it in my car. So. Yep, that's a really mm -hmm. important point. Did anything else that Holly say surprise you or something that you didn't think about when you were shopping for your car seat? I think the color thing actually didn't really surprise me. Mm -hmm. I have other friends who have purchased car seats and they, I guess, were guided a bit on the color and the, the look of the car seat which I guess is a, a new parent, you you want everything to look nice until you realize that the baby's just going to make it look bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's, um, I, I would assume a lot of people get sucked into that. A key point that I would like to bring up is the budget. And mm. the idea that especially that you could be judged as a parent oh, you didn't buy the most expensive car seat. It must not be the safest one. There's this inherent guilt in the pricing. And I think it's really important that caregivers understand the seats on the Canadian market have to meet our federal motor vehicle safety standards. So our Canadian motor vehicle safety standards, all of the car seats that are sold on the market must pass the same tests. And what that means to you as a caregiver is that if you are in a crash that is survivable, which we know not all are, but if the crash is survivable and your car seat is used correctly, it's going to do its job. Hmm. And that doesn't matter if the car seat is $90 or if the car seat is $700. Hmm. It's really important that we know how to use it correctly, which again, that's where I got <laughs> personally a little bit stuck as a first time parent too, which is yeah, how I, I ended that's up a, here. That's a really important piece of information because there's an assumption that if it's more expensive, that not just for car seats, for a lot of different products, that they're better. Um, Shazia, mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of information like this to know about. Um, where did you go or where are you thinking of going, like going in the future? Uh, as you, you know, navigate the, this new baby <laughs> thing, this new process um, for, for things like car seats, what are the places where you think to go? Um, well, I also felt that like some were more expensive than others. And why was that? And what makes one more, more expensive than the other? Is it safer? Is it not? Um, so I checked, I would do an internet search to check um, at first from, you know, reputable sites. And then also I like to see sites that compare different models and show mm. like actual videos or things of like why a certain thing is better than another thing. 
Um, but I also have a lot of family and friends who've recently had children. And so I'd like to understand their um, experiences as well. Um, so I kind of just took all of that and then made a decision. Mm -hmm. I, I think you make a really good point that someone who has used the products, not just, you know, what, what the manufacturers or the sellers are telling you about. I think that's important too, because as, as Holly said, you know, you have to be able to use it correctly, but ease of use is, is pretty high up there on, uh, you know, some confusing uh, aspect of, of car seats. Um, Beth, where, where are you going for information? I mostly went to friends and family as well who mm -hmm. have had um, babies in the last couple of years and what they used and what they recommended. So I guess word of mouth was my biggest source. Mm -hmm. For purchasing, for installing, I, I'm pretty sure I would go online for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Holly, where, where would you recommend, um, you know, Beth and Shazia and other expecting parents, um, go looking for information because it does change over time as well. So you want to make sure you're getting the most recent credible information. Yeah. The first step for selecting car seats is really always go to the store, find something that's in your budget that you know is going to fit the child you're going to put into it. So look at the packaging, make sure the height and weight ranges match the child you intend to put into that car seat. So for an infant, you'd be looking at an infant seat or some of the convertible seats on the market may also work. So going to the store and trying them in your vehicle first will really help you narrow down what you could even possibly look at as an option. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're almost spinning in circles and then you might get your heart set on something and realize that that's not even going to work for you. So I would go there first. Also consider, does anyone else drive that vehicle? Because if someone's taller than you or shorter than you, it may change where the seats are positioned and that could also change how your car seat fits. So there's a lot of those personal factors you have to get out of the way first. Once you've got that, the user manual that comes with your car seat is gold. That is the rule of law. That is what you want to follow. Um, sometimes we get advice from friends and family about how to use our car seats. And one of the most common ones I hear done wrong is the handle position for infant car seats. Specifically, oh, it has to be upright. It acts almost like a little roll cage. But on some car seats, like the one you've purchased, Beth, it has to actually go forward towards the feet for that particular model. And on some car seats, like the one that I had when my daughter was a newborn, the handle had to go all the way back past the shell of the seat. So there's these little differences that we really should always be going to that source of truth, which is the user manual. And if there's ever any, you know, inkling of, mm, I can't interpret this correctly, or I'm not really sure if this is answering my question, phone them. They've got such good customer support and they can answer those questions because in order for that car seat to do its job, we have to use it correctly. That's the way it was installed and used when they did the crash tests. So we want to make sure we're using it to the T in that way. Thanks, Holly. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back in a moment. Nearly three decades ago, Amazon set out to be Earth's most customer-centric company, where people can discover and purchase the widest possible selection of safe and authentic goods. As part of that mission, they obsess over earning and maintaining trust by ensuring that they provide a trustworthy shopping experience. Amazon is dedicated to helping you make informed choices and use your purchases safely. Visit www.amazon.ca slash product safety and usage and explore expert tips, articles, and videos from our partners to ensure a secure shopping experience. Okay, before the break, we were talking about places to go for credible information about car seat installation and the manufacturer's um, instruction manual is the place to go. Um, that, that can be really overwhelming, the amount of technical information. Um, and I think just the overwhelming um, fear of making the wrong choice. So Holly, what advice would you give to Shazia, to Beth, parents in general, even just more generally when in, you know, finding and installing a car seat for their infant? This is a big choice, a big decision for them to make. 
So that's really where we come in at the Child Passenger Safety Association of Canada. We have certified CPSTs, which stands for Child Passenger Safety Technician. We are trained and certified in the proper use and installation of car seats and booster seats. So there are a number of volunteer CPSTs all across the country, probably one in your own community. And we help caregivers navigate that because reading a manual is really overwhelming. It can be difficult to comprehend some of this stuff or really kind of, it get, again, like you said, it gets jargony, very technical. And having someone there to help you interpret that that's had that experience with multiple car seats is a really, really great way to give yourself that support. The majority of us across the country, as I said, operate as volunteers. And so that gives you an opportunity to really make use of that wonderful resource in your community. If you can't see someone in person, there's also a number of CPSTs that will help through video chat. And manufacturers may also have some on staff as well that will video chat with you, depending on which car seat you have. Mm -hmm. So there's that opportunity to connect and just have someone give you that double check Yep, you've got this all okay. And if you're still expecting, we'll usually use a doll, show you how to harness the baby up Mm -hmm. so that you know that they're harnessed correctly, which is really one of the hardest things in the beginning because they're so small and fragile and people get nervous about it. And then after the fact, you can always come back for a double check and just say, does this look good? Did I get the harnessing right? And just know that we want to help you. Mm -hmm. So please reach out to a CPST. And in Canada, you can do that by visiting our main website, which is sipsac.org, cpsac.org. We have a find a tech map and you can locate someone in your community or virtually that can help you out. That's really, that's really important, I think. And I think uh, through the conversation that we've been having, it's, it's really important for parents to know that they're not alone, that there's so many other people experiencing the same things, that overwhelming, you know, uh, feeling when you go into the store and just see the wall of car seats and what, you know, choices that you could make. And I think Shazia and Beth, you've both talked about, you know, having friends um, that have helped you to make those decisions. But here's an opportunity. What would you suggest to the car seat manufacturers um, that, you know, might improve the experience for you and other parents in buying and installing these seats for their kids? Um, Beth, maybe start with you. I mean, our car seat's still in the box, but I think Mm -hmm. just to try and streamline it a bit, um, have better resources online. I know there's a lot of resources online and, you know, some of it's credible, some of it's not. um, So that you take away new parents going to friends and family and you direct them more towards the manufacturers, either resources or, you know, credible resources that they find online. Yeah, because it it could be overwhelming. I mean, when you do open the box and you get into that manufacturer's manual, I mean, you could be just throwing up your hands and saying, I can't follow this, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So making it making it easier. You guys have so much on your plate, so much on your mind to worry about. Um, Shazia, what what advice would you give? I mean, obviously, you know, the easier the better, but why is it this hard? <laughs> Um, yeah, I agree. Just making it easier on how to um, kind of navigate the process and where to find all the information and, you know, that the capacity is based on height and weight and not on age and trying to find different types of information in a more streamlined way for sure would make the process easier. Yeah. You also mentioned something earlier, which I thought was really important, was a, a comparison between what are are the different um functions of, you know, of the car seats that you can buy. Mm-hmm. You you said you looked at the various, you know, there's options to use or, you know, does it come with the stroller or does it fit, you know, does it fit a stroller? What, you know, what are those types of things? So, uh, you know, a comparison, mm-hmm. not only on safety, because as Holly said, everything sold in Canada should be safe, but there's some other aspects Color, um, price, you know, other <laughs> things like that. You mentioned you did a bit of a comparison. What were some of the things that you were looking at? Um, so 
we didn't even realize there was a convertible seat versus an infant seat. So looking at those types of comparisons, um, I know the the model that Beth got has like the load leg, whereas the one that we got doesn't. Um, some of them, like um, my family in the U.S., and they use one that swiveled like to the side to the door. Um, but that didn't seem to be a big thing in Canada. So just looking at the differences in those types of features and you know, like um, Holly mentioned, like when we went into the store, the retailer was like, well, they're all, if so, um, you know, so we were wondering, well, what makes one different than the other? And what does one, is one safer than another? So um, just trying to understand what those different features were and Mm -hmm. why would they, why they'd be important. Yeah. And how they'll work for your lifestyle and your car mm-hmm. and your vehicle and, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. And in your cases, you may not know that yet because you haven't had that <laughs> that experience, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, Holly, what would you say from an expert's perspective, um, just to wrap up here, what would you suggest to car manufacturers that would be an, an improvement? You know, they really have made some great improvements over the last year. And I've started to see a lot of QR codes going onto car seats directly right onto the plastic shell on a sticker, and that can help caregivers make sure that they are watching an accurate video put out by the manufacturer, not a random YouTube video by someone (laughs) else like I did. And that way they're getting, you know, that nice visual of the install. Also, just adding more plain language to the user manuals, Mm -hmm. try to make it a little less jargony. Mm -hmm. And labeling the pieces of the car seat well, if there's any rules. An example Mm -hmm. I'd give Mm -hmm. for that would be the infant inserts and cushioning. A lot of them have to come out at certain weights or certain fit requirements need to be met. And that's often not clear to caregivers. So having it printed right on those soft goods, we call them, Mm -hmm. would be another way that they can improve. Some brands are doing it now but mm-hmm. it could definitely get better. Well, that's good to know that there uh, there have been improvements and we certainly know that there can be more. Shazia, Beth, and Holly, thanks so much for taking the time to come on the Popping the Bubble Wrap podcast and talking about car seats for newborns and infants. It certainly is not straightforward, and but there is... Uh, excellent information out there for you to be able to make those choices. And Beth and Shazi, I think you've given other parents listening to the podcast some additional information to think about just to know they're not the only ones going through this. Join me for the next episode of Popping the Bubble Wrap, when we'll be talking about consumer product standards and recalls, like where to find information and how to report an issue related to child products. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. Popping the Bubble Wrap is a podcast of Parachute, Canada's national injury prevention charity. We release episodes monthly. Visit us at parachute.ca and follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Parachute Canada. Don't keep us a secret though. Help other parents find this podcast by sharing the link to Popping the Bubble Wrap and taking a second to submit a review. It really does help. Popping the Bubble Wrap is produced by Story Studio Network.